Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about another succession which takes place in a freshly formed water body that is called hydrarch succession. There are seven steps of this hydrarch succession. The first is known as phytoplankton stage. This stage is the pioneering stage. So they are the pioneers and in this pioneer species we find diatoms, dinoflagellates, the unicellular organisms which help in photosynthesis. Death of these organisms, death of diatoms and dinoflagellates would result in formation of a thin layer of mud or muck at the bottom of this water body. So there is muck or mud formation, a very thin layer. So after the phytoplanktons, the next stage is of submerged plants. So this is called the submerged stage. And the reason why these submerged plants appear because they are going to be rooted plants and they would use this little mud which is formed at the bottom. So here the plants which appear would include Vallisneria, Hydrilla, Utricularia type of plants. So they are going to remain in the water body and Vallisneria type of plants they have roots also which are, which are going to anchor in this little mud formation. Now when the submerged plants also die, this would result in formation of a thicker layer of mud. But after this, the next stage is the submerged plants are there and now there are going to be free floating also. So this is known as submerged and free floating stage. So here there are two types of plants. There are submerged plants also and there are going to be free floating plants also. Submerged plants are going to remain the same and the free floating plants can be like Pistia and Trapa. Trapa or Pistia type of plants. So now there are two categories, submerged also and the free floating also. And every Serial stage will result into addition to that little mud at the bottom of the newly formed water body. So phytoplanktons resulted into thin layer, then the submerged, their dead bodies added little more layer, then the submerged and the free floating one. The fourth stage is known as the reed swamp stage. In reed swamp stage, because of death of all these three communities, the pioneer and two serial, the bottom is going to become shallower or the lake is going to become shallower. Now here the depth is normally one to three meters. This shallowing of water body has taken place due to deposition of this uh, dead bodies and the mud formation and in the reed swamp stage we would find plants like Sagittaria and Polygonum type. So now these plants would appear in this particular stage. The next stage is known as marsh meadow stage. In marsh meadow stage, now the lake is going to get even more shallow. Again, 
there is one more serial community which is added in this case and all other previous ones are all already there. So now more and more organisms are going to die and normally whenever we talk of succession we write down the names of the plants but plant and animal succession it takes place uh, at the same pace. So there are animals also which are present here along with the plants. So animals also die and the plants also die. So all this organic matter gets added up at the bottom and the lake becomes shallower and shallower. Now marsh meadow stage and the sixth one, the next one is called the scrub stage. Now in these two stages we will start seeing that the lake becomes so shallow that the plants are submerged but a major part of their body gets exposed. If suppose we draw this water body this much is going to be all this mud deposition, organic matter and say if this is the water, these plants would be small tree kind of plants. So they would be rooted here and some part of their body will remain submerged and a major part of their body will become exposed. So in these two cases, we will start seeing some small trees. Like in this case, we would see Salix, Populus, Cassia, these kind of trees, uh, whereas in marsh meadow, Juncus, type of uh, trees and Sedge. These are also short, small trees, but in both the cases, these trees would appear. And as the lake becomes shallower and shallower, the peripheral part also gets deposition of this organic matter and mud formation. So the diameter or the entire area will also become smaller and smaller and the depth of the lake will also go on decreasing. And now comes the seventh stage which is the climax community. So this is the climax community which is the forest. And the forest type would depend upon the rainfall type of trees in the forest depends on the rainfall in that particular area. If it receives more and more rainfall, then it is going to be a rainforest. So it is this factor that is rainfall or precipitation which would decide the type of trees in this particular community but this will be called the climax community. If you remember we said whether succession starts in dry or xeric conditions or in water it always progresses towards mesic condition. So here also it started in a freshly formed water body which is like pure water and when the forest develops the conditions are mesic that means there is moderate level of water content in the soil. And in case of Zerarch succession also we saw that it started on a cold lava or a new solid surface and it went up to climax which was again a forest. So from absolutely dry to mesic or completely hydric condition to basic condition. So this is how the successions progress. Now in the next part we'll talk about another component or aspect of ecosystem that is nutrient cycles.